Welcome back to more designs. In our last video, we used Keynote to create this blank notebook. And today we are gonna turn that notebook into a planner with monthly spreads and weekly spreads. Before we jump in, make sure you take a minute to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and now let's make this planner. So before you watch this video, take a second to pause, go check out my last video. This really breaks down how to get a plain notebook set up with tabs and clickable links and everything else. So if you don't already have that, I'll make sure to link it here. Go ahead and check it out. The planner that I want to build today is going to be a mini planner. I want to have a spread for this month, next month, and then individual weekly spreads for in between. So I'm going to start by building out my March calendar. The first step is to actually make the gridded calendar. So to do this, I'm going to start by inserting a table. So I'm gonna click up top on table. The format doesn't matter because we're gonna change it. And then I need to adjust my rows and columns. And what I need to think about is the fact that this is a two page spread. So I'm gonna make two separate charts. So I wanna think about the left side. I'm gonna put four days. I'm gonna have that be my Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I'm gonna look at how many weeks there are in March. I know usually it's around four, but different months start on different days of the week. So I'll just check a quick calendar and then adjust my rows and columns as such. So for March 2020, I'm going to have five rows and four columns. Once I'm done, I want to start formatting it. So the first thing I want to do is turn off this alternating row color. Then I'm going to click on cell and I want each cell to be outlined. So I'm going to change the color a little bit, make it a nice gray, make it a little thicker, and this is going to outline each box in my calendar. Once I'm done with that, I can start to adjust. Now I want each of these to be an actual box. So once it's about the size I like, I'm going to go back into table and look at the height and width and adjust it to be the same. So in this case, I'm going to change them both to be right at 160. And this is going to ensure that every single box is a box, not a rectangle. Now that I have it adjusted I'm going to line it up and then copy and paste to the next side now as I said before because days of the week is seven which is not an even number I need this to be one less column but the same number of rows when you adjust it down a column it's going to change the size of those boxes so I'm going to go back down and make it 160 by 160 again and now I've got the box set up for my calendar now I'm going to play around a little bit with how I want the heading to look since this is the first time you'll see March in my planner, I usually like to make it big and stand out a little bit and play with the colors. So I'm going to play around with the colors and see what I come up with. Finding the right color can be hard sometimes. Some tips and tricks that I'll tell you that I've used in the past, sometimes I'll actually pull in other pictures. Use the little Doppler to pull colors from the color palette. Sometimes I'll try to pull from colors I already have on my planner and make colors that correspond, that are a little darker or lighter. In this case, I feel like I still need to do something to make it stand out a little bit, so I'm gonna do the word March on top of March and see how that looks. Again, I just want you to see the full process. There is a lot of playing around with creating planners and deciding really what fits, uh, what goes well to Together, what stands out etc so when you're making your own planner make sure you just take the time to play play with what colors look good what fonts look good what sizes of things look good it's all about playing around until it looks just right and I think I'm finally getting to a place where I like how this looks so now that I have a title that I like it's time to add the headings for the weeks on my calendar. And to try to keep things consistent, I'm actually gonna go in and copy and paste this darker March that I created. And I'm gonna change that to say Monday. I'm gonna adjust the size. And now I'm just gonna copy and paste it all the way down for the rest of my calendar. This is truly a creative process, so as you're creating, you might decide you like something more or less. So I'm actually going to go back in and adjust this color again because I'm still not thrilled with it to find something that I like. 
I'm going to start creating the numbers for my calendar and I'm actually going to copy and paste the format from up here because I want to use that same font but I'm going to have to adjust the size as well as the color. And you'll notice I do do a lot of copying and pasting throughout and that's just because I like to keep some things consistent throughout my spread so I'll use a few fonts but I try not to use too many and same with colors. I'll use a few colors but not too many. Once I have the number the way that I like, I'm simply starting to copy and paste it and move it over into each square. Make sure before you do this, you double check and note when the first of the month is. In this case, it happens to be on Sunday. So I'm gonna continue this all the way down to the end of the month. It does take a little bit of time, but once you've done it once, I'm gonna show you with April how to do this in a much quicker way. Now I've pointed out in previous videos, Keynote has yellow lines that pop up to help with aligning everything, so I do use those to make sure my numbers are aligned in rows and columns just so it all looks nice and even. And there we have it. I now have my March 2020 calendar set up with the dates. Before I go down to April, I'm going to select everything, which you can do by dragging over it or just hitting Command A or Control A depending on if you're a Mac. And that's going to highlight everything on the screen, and remember the actual tabs and the planner itself are in our master slide, so it's not going to highlight that, it's just gonna highlight the work we've done. And then I'm gonna go down to April and paste it. And now instead of recreating everything, I can simply go in and change the word March to April, and then just move all of my calendar numbers over to the appropriate spot. Now if you wanted to, you could add other things to your calendar pages. I like to just leave some empty space so that I have room where I could decorate or add goals or to-do lists or whatever you want. But if you wanted to add in extra boxes, you're more than welcome to. So with our calendars done, it's time to jump into our weekly spreads. So I'm gonna start on week one, and I actually prefer to have all the times written out. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the times from a previous planner. But then I'm gonna go in and grab the title from my March page, because I wanna keep the format the same. But instead of just saying March, I want this top piece to actually say the week that it is. In this case, it would be March 2nd to March 8th. And now it's time to start formatting my page. So I'm gonna begin by duplicating this box and just starting to lay it out. Now again, just like our calendar, we have to think about how much we want on each page. A week is seven days, so at some point there's a split, and part of it is just playing around with it until you have it the way it looks. So I've decided I'm gonna have these time spots for Monday through Friday. On the end, I'm gonna have a Saturday and Sunday box. So as you're spacing things out, remember to use those yellow guidelines to make sure that everything is even. All right, so now I have my Monday through Friday fairly well and spaced out. And now I wanna create a blank box to go over the top of everything. I always like to have a blank box up top just in case there's something that is for all day. And whenever you need to move everything together, just remember by clicking on one thing and then holding shift and clicking on the next, it highlights them all together. Part of the reason I wanted to create this with you guys is I wanted you to see how much playing around with is required to really make it the way you want it to look. So now I wanna add the labels that are gonna go in there. So I'm gonna label this Monday and then I'm gonna have to adjust the size. Now as I create my Monday label, I've actually decided I don't like those top boxes for the Monday label, so I'm going to go through and delete those as I add in my Tuesday through the rest of the week. One great thing about digital planning is you can use different setups for every week, every month, it's really up to you. So in the past, I've actually done weekends in one box, but I find that just doesn't work best for me. So what I think I'm gonna do is create just an empty box for Saturday and Sunday. This does require a little bit of playing because I want them to be the same size, but also even with the rest of the week. So I'm gonna click on both, and then I'm gonna go to arrange and group them. And this is gonna allow me to adjust the size, and it's going to actually adjust both boxes at once. So if I stretch it out a little bit, it can then ungroup and I know both boxes just got the exact same amount bigger. And I notice it's a little too much, so I'm going to group them again, bring them down, ungroup. 
Now I always love to leave empty space at the bottom. In previous planners I've actually labeled this as to-do lists or shopping lists or menus. There's more freedom in just having empty space and that's again just what worked for me. If you want to add labels into these bottom boxes you can. Now I'm noticing that I don't love the spacing of my boxes so I'm actually going to group my entire layout for the top part and stretch it out a little bit and begin to play with the sizing until I find something that I like. So I'm going to let you guys watch this on fast forward for a little bit because I really do play around with the layout for quite some time until I find something that is just right. So I think I've finally gotten this to a place that I like it. And the other thing I really like to have in my weekly spreads is I love to have a little small calendar just to let me see what the month looks like as a whole. To do this, I'm actually gonna put in another table and I'm gonna go through a lot of the same process that I did before, but with a little bit less formatting. And I need enough for all the dates, but nothing else, which means across I need seven and up and down I need five. And I'm just gonna go through and quickly number one, two, three, all the way to the end of the month. I'm going to turn off the alternating row color and then I want to pull that font in that I've already used throughout my planner and then just adjust the size and if I'm pulling at this bottom corner it's actually going to adjust the full size pretty evenly. So I'm going to shrink it down to just about the size of the numbers. So I officially have a weekly spread done. My next step is to redo this for the other pages. So again if I hit Command A and then Command C, I'm able to copy and paste all the work that I just did. And now all I really have to do is go in and adjust the dates. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through and create a weekly spread for each week with the correct dates. So at this point, we've done it. We've created our little mini planner. We have month setups, we have week setups, we even have a few extra pages. In our last video, we set up all those live links. So the only step left is to bring this into our iPad. So to do this, I first need to save it as a PDF. So I'm gonna need to go to export to, select PDF. Don't change any of these settings, just hit next then choose where you want to save it and select export. Now there's a number of ways you can get it to your iPad from here. If you're working from all Apple products, I'll show you what I think is the easiest, but you can email it to yourself. You can save it on your cloud. You can put it in Dropbox. That's really up to you or even Google Drive. What I like to do is just to airdrop it from one to the other because I can do it in just seconds. So I'm going to open up two finder windows, simply drag and drop my PDF onto my iPad. Now I'm going to jump over my iPad to show you you what that looks like. So on my iPad I have a notification of an airdrop and I'm going to send it to GoodNotes. Then I want to import it as a new document and hit import. And there you have it. Our planner is all here just as we built it. All the pages are there ready to go. So now you have a planner that you built from scratch. If you've been trying out these strategies, find me on Instagram at More Craft Design. I would love to see what you've created and who knows, you might even get a shout out on a future video. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see all of you in our next video.